that entailed and, and why you think you got what you wanted to get out of it? Just a lot of consistent work. Uh, the last four summers or so have been kind of chaotic in terms of traveling places and doing extra stuff that were all cool experiences but kind of chopping up the summer with you know, being on the go trying to work out and things like that. I was, I was here most of the summer kind of off the radar for the most part to the end of the summer but just trying to just grind and uh, understand the little things I need to do in terms of conditioning and like strength work and all that type of stuff. Honestly, as you get older, to, to kind of maintain, you can't really take that much time off. Um, kind of in my in my experience, so that's that was part of the, the gig. But I just had a lot of consistent work, which had me feeling really good physically and mentally coming into the season. What do you think that can do for you moving forward? Play more efficient. Continue to do what I've been doing even better at a higher level. And, Who knows what that, like, again, I always say that coming into the season, who knows what that means stats-wise, but I know when I walk off the court every night, you know, leaving it all on the floor and just doing what I need to do to help my team win. And, uh, I could, I, that's the one thing I can control is how I'm prepared for the season. I think I did that. As a leader of this team, obviously, how much are you monitoring the cost that's going on? I mean, he's kind of expected to be on the roster, but he's not in the camp. I mean, obviously, that's my teammate. That's my brother. He's... You know, he's been through a lot the last six months uh, with his injury and trying to come back for playoffs and whatnot. But just like I told him at the end of the day, I hope he's you know got good people in his corner, giving him some sound advice and whatnot. But we want him here on the team. We know he can help us win. Uh, you know, put him on a platform to shine so that he can be a a long time you know NBA player and. At the end of the day, hopefully he does what's best for him, first and foremost. And uh, I hope that means he's he's back with us sooner or later. Steph, I saw you working out with him yesterday after practice. How is he growing in your eyes as a two-way guy to right now? He just feels more, uh, he seems more comfortable. Coming into training camp knowing his, his situation is pretty much solid in terms of knowing what team he's going to be on for the whole year. And now he's just trying to find that little ways to, to get better, uh, to find his role in terms of how the rotations are going to go. And obviously that'll, that'll play out through training camp and through preseason schedule. But i got to believe it's a sense of relief for him just in terms of knowing you're going to put your head on the pillow for the whole season. Uh, all you got to worry about is playing basketball, being at your best, and knowing that a team really wants you. Uh, and that's the case here. Uh, we know he can help us win. So, you guys have obviously been going back and forth against each other for years, but what will it be like to have the bronze in the West and to see him win four times? That's basically it. We've seen him four times instead of two. <laughs> you know, potentially the playoffs, but you know what type of player he is scout the Lakers just like we scout every other team in terms of their tendencies and strengths and weaknesses and whatnot, but not that much difference in terms of what we're in. Stephen mentioned sitting at Staples in that Lakers jersey, that would be, I guess, getting pumped up a little more. Is that the way in for you? If you need any more reason to get up for a game against a guy like LeBron or Whatever, find whatever you need to get ready. <laughs> Stuff to your uh, point, yesterday media day about setting mini goals. Like, what are your mini goals, Ellen? I mean, you've obviously accomplished so much from where you're at in your career. <coughs> uh, stay healthy, one. Try to uh, be there for my teammates for as many games as I can. Bless you. <coughs> get rid of these allergies. Uh, <laughs> First and foremost, and uh, I mean, I don't know. At the end of the day, like I know what type of player I am. I know what I expect of myself night in and night out. 
and it's more of a feel of a standard in terms of if I know I'm all the way there and all the way present and all the way doing what I'm supposed to do and I got to get to that point every single night so for me I think personally as a leader just there's not a tangible goal in terms of like wins and losses but get off to a better start this season and I think I can help lead that, that with energy and focus and whatnot as we start the year this year. Guys often talk about how they can really appreciate their work after they retire, but are you able to appreciate what you've been able to do, what this team has been able to do over these past few years in the moment? It's really hard to. I heard Draymond talk about he didn't think about the trophy or championship all summer because of how hard it was. And that spoke volumes to me in terms of really just contextualizing the competitiveness and like the fight that it takes to have these murals on the wall. Then you have two and a half months to turn the page and think about what it's gonna take to get back there. Like we're human. That's a that's a tall task in terms of like all that you go through mentally and physically throughout the season. So uh, obviously there's basketball and sports is have a perspective around that, but it is tough. Like I don't think there's it's really hard to like step outside of that mindset and really just think about what we've accomplished until it's over. It's, it's going to be hard to do that. But as someone who was here when it wasn't so good, you probably have a unique perspective on that though in terms of just how far you've come. No, I do for sure. Just uh, to be honest, I read Marcus's speech yesterday or today, this morning. Mm -hmm. And like was, that was almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I still remember like every detail of that story. So yeah, I do have an appreciation for getting to this part, to this place. But in terms of like the run that we're on right now and the, the journey that we're trying to get back to the championship, like that's all you can think about. Mm -hmm. And the little things that help you get there. So I don't, I don't have that much time in the day to put that mental, <laughs> mental uh, effort into it. Steph, regarding the health stuff, like how do you just process the turn of events this offseason with Chelsea leaving, but you know what she's done for you, but also Rick coming here knowing his body of work with Steve Nash? It's different, but yeah. why this person told me different isn't always <laughs> worse. It means, you know, you just, just got to figure it out. The transition period, getting to know each other. Rick's got a great staff. They're very attentive, very collaborative in terms of getting feedback from us, from the people that we work with over the summers, and understanding how they can just be helped. Uh, and not come in with like, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, we're gonna do it this way, but we've obviously had success with guys' routines and kind of what they expect from themselves, so they just wanna amplify that. And they've been very consistent with that, that theme as they come in. And, you can look, while we're shooting, it's a day two of practice while we're out here getting our individual work in. You know, Rick's just on the side watching, taking mental notes about how I move, things that he can help, or things that he can see that would help me stay healthy, injury prevention, all that type of stuff. And uh, we'll have that good back and forth. And that's yeah. part of the building process in terms of uh, a whole new staff that you gotta get to know on the fly. Is it, is it a little bit weird not having your work wife around, Chelsea? I would never call it that. <laughs> no, you better I'm not sure. call it that. Uh, it is weird, though. You build a relationship with somebody that every day you come into practice, come into games. Uh, sometimes they know what's going on before you even tell them. Me and Chelsea had a long year last year in terms of you know, the three injuries I had. So, uh, yeah, it's different. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get used to it. <laughs> was it a pleasant surprise you didn't need to have any procedures this summer, or is that what you expected going in once the season was over? It's what I expected. Okay. It's what I hoped for. Right. <laughs> in terms of being able to take a little bit of rest and uh, get back on the court and just work and not have to deal with any lingering effects. Uh, I, took a month, I took a month off, almost a month off, and uh, I came back, the body felt pretty solid. Still had a couple of aches and pains, but you work through that, and over the course of summer, things get back to normal, so, yeah. 
surgery is a whole nother, a whole nother animal. I'm not gonna mess with. with the new baby, are you still getting your, your sleep like normal, or are you you have a cycle where you're waking up at a certain <laughs> I'm time? I'm getting or? adequate sleep that a parent of three should get. <laughs> Not the same sleep I got back in 09. But it's, uh, it's plenty for sure. Uh, your security guy Ralph Walker retired. I was wondering, what are you going to miss most about him? And if you had one memory, one story that you remember the most, Ralph. We all miss a lot. I don't got enough time to tell about everything. He's he's uh, been a stable figure around here for since I've been here. So. Basically, part of my family in terms of uh, how close we got, and he's put a lot of time in police forces and man in the fort down here with the Warriors. So definitely, well deserved break in retirement for him. Uh, I don't know what funny stories. I, I just personally it's more funny just anytime there's like an altercation or an incident where somebody like tries to run up on me and Ralph has to spring into action. Those are just my favorite moments because you see another side of me. He's still kind of calm and nice and approachable. And then when he when he got to go into Rocket Ralph spring into action mode, it's a, it's a sight to see. So I don't miss those moments for sure. Hey, uh, Steph, uh, Steve is about to get his eighth championship ring. Um, are you uh, jealous? Are you awed by that? Because, you know, one person is that me. I'm inspired. For sure. That dude's been in great, uh, great situations, but has elevated himself through those situations. So, uh, yeah, I'm inspired by that, just in terms of the amount of basketball knowledge he has, the experiences he's been through. And to know that I've been a part of three of those rings. And I think my dad was a part of the other three by losing to the Bulls back in the day. I got to see that up close and personal. I'm definitely inspired by what he's been able to accomplish for sure. Speaking of the rings, uh, the ring ceremony, um, how does that compare to the trophy ceremony? The ring ceremony is honestly the weirdest night of the year. Did you? You're celebrating something that happened four months ago, and then you gotta like appreciate the moment, see the banner fall, feel the energy from the crowd. Then you gotta put the rings back, go warm up for two and a half minutes, and then play an NBA basketball game where the other team is just salivating, waiting to you know, last year. get a hold of you after seeing the, the whole cer the ring ceremony. So it's so. Third time going through, I think we're one and one the last two, but uh, it's just a weird night all the way around. It's a lot of celebration, but for us, we can't really sit and just relax after you get the ring like we did something, because that's all we lose by that point. So we'll uh, we'll be ready to go. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.